Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Dave Listens to Hi-Fi. So, last weekend I drove a couple hours down the highway, took my little blue car, and I went to Toronto to see the Toronto Audio Fest. And I wanted to give you guys a, an idea of what I saw. I videoed a bunch of it, and I wanted to give you my impressions. Now, this is all subjective, this is just what I heard on the day, in the systems, often equipment was unfamiliar to me, I didn't know a lot of the uh, test material, I didn't uh, choose it myself, but this is what they were showing off, these are my impressions, and uh, I wanted to let you know what I thought. So, I started out in the Saturn audio room. I spoke to Joe, who is responsible for the source, uh, the Betis Audio Revolution X4 streamer, which is like a supercomputer being used as an audio streamer. Uh, seriously well designed and overbuilt, uh, these products from Montreal sounded big and solid with a seamless soundstage. Uh, the systems tended towards comfortable and musical, and really engaging. Um, next in the retailer Audio by Mark Jones's room, they were showing off some really dynamic Clarisys Audio ribbon speakers. These are the evolution of the Apogee ribbons, uh, taken to the next level by the team at Clarisys. Um, listen to Led Zeppelin on, on an LP12 through CH Precision. Um, so it was definitely really good. On Axis, it sounded great with impact and air. Sounded like they could use a sub for the full range sound though. Uh, the amps were putting out like 700 to 800 watts at times. Um, yet yeah, sounded fully in control. Very impressive. Audio Note was there with a the full system. Uh, the Maishu Phono Tone Meister uh, 300B integrated. Um, playing through the ANE SP E H E speakers, <laughs> real uh, letter salad that one. Um, one thing Audio Note does is it really sounds like music. Uh, this setup th with the speakers in the corner sounded a little shouty uh, and maybe a bit vintage. Imaging was a little vague, um, but that's how live music sounds like to my ears. True to life. Uh, I wandered into the Moon by Seam Audio Room. I listened to BMW 801 D4s powered by uh, Moon Electronics. These speakers were really full range, no subs needed, especially as powered by the 761 power amp, 200 watts per channel. Uh, the sound was detailed and transparent, um, but it was Friday morning when I went and the system sounded like it still wasn't fully warmed up, a little clenched, if you know what I mean. On the other hand, the Moon stuff is really just amazingly built. The fit and finish and build quality is really there for what you're paying. Um, I have to give the award for best remote to Seam Audio. The remote is like a thing of beauty. Uh, I would expect something like this to come from Campagnolo or Hasselblad. Uh, the next room I really liked was the coherent uh, Kuzma room. Uh, but of course they were playing Joe Jackson on a beautiful Kuzma table and a sapphire tone arm, so it had to sound good. Uh, the speakers just put together by coherent called the Modular 15 Thunder Dragon. These feature 4 by 15 inch bass drivers and one coax per channel. Over 100 dB efficient. They're powered by Alenic 300B push-pull monoblocks. Uh, the system was big and brash, dynamic as all get out, and uh, I hung out here for a while listening. Um, it's funny how little things stand out on, on some sometimes, like the wood blocks on Chacha Loco were just so real, effortless, really, really spectacular. Uh, Mote distribution were there, and thankfully they brought the PS Audio FR20 speakers, uh, powered by IQphase C2300 and A80 amp. The source was a Lumen Streamer and PS Audio Direct Stream DAC. I was so happy to hear these speakers sound great. At the Montreal show, I was fairly disappointed by the sound, but here they really shown. Um, very clean sound, powerful, extended and even bass, uh, extended top end. This room was the first one that was missing the upper mid glare that seemed a bit common to the other rooms I had heard up to now. Uh, redemption for PS Audio. Solid, fast transients, black backgrounds. Uh, almost a bargain for high-end audio. Next, I had to listen to the Gershman Eon Art Room. Uh, for some reason, Gershman speakers can just do no wrong by my ears. I really like the way they sound. The presentation, the bass, the imaging. They just seem to be able to do it all. And that's pretty much with any model I've heard of theirs. Uh, these Black Swan 30th Anniversary are pretty special. Uh, they were playing concert piano. The impact, the spaciousness, it really sounded like a real piano. You can hear the hammers, the ringing of the strings, the tension in the piano. Um, the Eon Art amps are pretty spectacular as well. Uh, they look like filing cabinets, but they're really the cutting edge of what I'll call the new hi-fi. Um, they're hybrid amps, tube and class D, 
using amazing build quality, super high-end parts, upgradable, and really cool mono-integrated designs. Uh, Source was a gorgeous Oracle Delphi Turbo reference. Really stunning. I have to give a shout out to PSB and their Alpha IQ speakers. These tiny wonders are powered streaming speakers that operate on the Blue OS system. At only 1700 Canadian a pair, I was really blown away by the sound. Uh, everything's there. Uh, plug them in and stream to them, or even plug in a moving magnet cartridge, put them on stands, and you're good to go. The sound was wonderfully spacious, uh, powerful and natural. No real need for a sub. Uh, bass wasn't really detailed. The SPL was limited, uh, but for the price, I really didn't see anything equal to it uh, at the show. Uh, I love that you can get this kind of sound of an easy and affordable speaker. Uh, color is available as well if you want. Um, I, I really like them. I went into another room and I heard the beautiful Audio Research i50 uh, integrated amp. This amp was actually stunning to see in person. Uh, the volume indicators are really cool. Uh, the form, the materials, the finishes, really, really impressive. Um, I think this is maybe the nicest looking product at the show. It was paired with some really interesting uh, rhythm speakers from India. Uh, visually striking, wideband drivers complemented by uh, active bass drivers. Uh, they certainly held promise. Uh, as a system, as much as I thought it looked amazing, the sound didn't really engage me all that much. Looks were there, but uh, I don't know, just missing something. Um, I saw another pair of speakers that were uh, new to me, the Audio Neck speakers from France. Uh, these use a unique open spiderless vertical dipole driver called the uh, Duopole 31. Uh, it operates uh, from 400 hertz to 10k in an efficient and controlled way. Uh, augmented with a woofer and a subwoofer and a super tweeter. Uh, to give a rated system re uh, response of 20 to 45k. These are driven by Griffin amplifiers, which were hard to fault. Um, I heard no artifacts that would indicate something lacking in the electronics for sure. Uh, speakers had an amazing wraparound imaging. Uh, they sounded soft but airy, uh, intimate. Uh, weird thing happened when someone walked in front of one speaker, like the soundstage completely collapsed. Um, I think that the room boundaries and obstructions would affect the speaker a bit. Uh, but on the whole, it was a palpable, detailed, I would equate it to, to audio note, a uh, similar feel to that sound. I also had the opportunity to hear the NED Masters Amp, a new streamer on the DALI Core Evolution speakers. Uh, now I have to say that these smaller speakers sounded better than the bigger versions I heard in Montreal. Uh, the NED Amps, I put these in the category of the new Hi-Fi high-tech with a more neutral but not thin sound. Uh, they're clean, quiet, powerful, rich sounding, uh, and fast at the same time. I'm really intrigued by these NED Masters products. Uh, I think they might be something special. Imaging was a little vague but clean and clear and really powerful sounding. Um, I could live with these for sure. Overall, listening to the NED amps makes me think that these might be the equipment I'd need to bring my speakers into the 21st century. Uh, I'll have to try to get a sample home. I'd love to hear it here. Uh, another room I really enjoyed was the vinyl sound room, featuring some absolutely gorgeous components. Uh, starting with the source, it was a, a Thorin's TD-124DD turntable. Uh, it's like a resto-modded Volvo. Uh, it looks quite a bit like the original 124, but it's direct drive instead of idler. Compact and beautiful. Uh, amplification is by Accuphase, the really classy E4000 integrated like an iron fist in a velvet glove. Uh, speakers were the Fleetwood DeVilles. Uh, I've heard them once before in, in Florida, and the sound was different. Uh, this time it was on um, solid state, previously it was with tube. Uh, I think the speakers are detailed and revealing uh, while retaining a, a lot of musicality, um, so you can really hear the difference in amplification. Uh, the compression driver in a wood horn is dynamic and a touch soft. Uh, vocals were really easy to understand. They're so revealing in the mids. Uh, it's also easy to listen to. Uh, solid wood cabinets made from torrified wood. Basically the wood is cooked in an oxygen-free uh, environment so that it doesn't burn, but it becomes very stable and uh, supposedly has better tone. Certainly can't argue with the results. Uh, next I heard the classic pairing of B&W and Class A, uh, 805 signatures powered by Class A Delta separates. 
a really solid sound out of these small speakers. Make you reconsider floor standards. Um, strong transients, dark background, a, a little boomy at times, but, but a great pairing. A solid imaging, and the finish on these speakers and the build quality of the amps really complement each other. Uh, the room that surprised me was the Audio Group Denmark. Uh, I heard Access Electronics, the Forte One preamp streamer. It has an oversized display that looks like an early digital watch. Um, the speakers were the Borenson X2, a thin tower with ribbon tweeter and carbon fiber drivers, a vented enclosure. The system was full range, deep sound stage, detailed, delicate, dynamic. Uh, they played loud with little, little distortion or compression. Um, they sounded illuminated, like the soundstage was well lit. Uh, I actually spent several songs in this room. Uh, these relatively affordable components were eminently listenable. Uh, this kind of stuff makes you question those megabuck systems. I really enjoyed the sound out of this room quite a bit. Um, now I want to talk about the new Galleon amps from Thomas, uh, from Thomas and Stereo. Uh, I've heard his TS120 amp, and now this was his new TS34, which is an EL34 tube integrated. Uh, it sounded harmonically rich with a delicate top end, and pretty impressive impact through the uh, XTC speakers. Um, the amp that really interested me was his new solid state amps. Um, first I heard the TS75. Uh, this amp um, has impressive slam. Uh, it's resolving through the mid-range with an airy top end. The uh, soundstage was slightly less illuminated sounding, um, but it, the soundstage was really wide and it made it easy to focus on the central image. Um, how's this for a recommendation? Uh, I'm willing to put down my own money uh, when they become available. Uh, Thomas was also showing his new uh, low power class A solid state amp. This one really holds promise as well even more detail than the 75 watt uh, AB uh, TS75. Um, I didn't get a chance to evaluate this one very much, uh, but I'm gonna give it a listen when I get a chance. I wandered into the Hegel room and I heard Magnapans like I hadn't heard them before. Uh, there was a ton of control, smooth and airy top end. Uh, the Hegel H600 integrated sounds like it grabs the speakers and it doesn't let go. The sound was airy, big as panel sound with a real presence to the voice. Um, the intimacy that I heard on Sarah McLaughlin's voice was pretty impressive, especially considering the power on tap, uh, 300 watts per channel. Um, I'm not used to hearing that much top end from Magnapans, but honestly I haven't had much experience with the 3.7s, uh, but they do feature Magnapans full ribbon tweeter. Um, the Ellipson uh, speakers powered by a Modrite monoblocks and an aesthetic preamp in the Altitudo audio room uh, sounded pretty nice, uh, especially in soundstage depth and width, uh, pretty much on par with the Gershwin speakers I had heard. Uh, folded AMT tweeter sounded forceful in the small room and integrated well with the, the cone drivers. Uh, I can certainly see the appeal of these uh, French speakers. Uh, I was lucky to come across the monitor audio room. Uh, they were showing their all-out assault, all assault on high-end speakers, the uh, Hyphen new speaker. Uh, there is weirdly wonderful looking speakers are really out of the box thinking. Uh, they have opposed pairs of 8-inch drivers kind of cancelling each other out so there's no residual vibration. Uh, really rigid cabinets help. And then they stick a multi-driver unit on the front of that that has their pleated tweeter in the center of six mid-range drivers. Um, these speakers looked a little unsettling, uh, but the quality of the bass was seriously impressive and have very high SPLs as well. Um, they were played loud, but it was clean and not overpowering. Uh, I found the imaging to be especially uh, impressive. I was standing outside of the plane of the speakers, but I still heard a wide and deep sound stage spread out between the speakers. Uh, amplification and source were uh, from Rotel's flagship line, Michi. Um, the monoblock amps are ridiculous, over a thousand watts into 8 ohms per channel, um, 32 output transformers per channel, and power supply capacitors that are the size of my fist. Uh, these amps are certainly powerful. Uh, the whole demo was done to blow you away, so I can't comment on how well they do with microdynamics, um, 
but altogether this system can really kick. Uh, definitely try to listen to these speakers if you get a chance. I also visited another big buck room featuring the Acora speakers from Scarborough. Uh, they were showing off their flagship uh, VRC loudspeakers. 420 pounds of granite, paper, and copper standing on either sides of the room like monoliths of sound. Uh, they're driven by the over-the-top D'Agostino Momentum monoblocks and Momentum HD preamp. Source was a turntable brand I not heard of, um, SAT and their model XD1 with a Lyra cartridge. Uh, speakers were set up very wide, and I took a chance to sit right in the front row to listen. Uh, magically, the sound stage filled the center, very large scale sound, uncolored, effortless dynamics. Um, what I was thinking while listening was that the designers of this equipment really must have listened to this equipment. Um, they didn't just measure when they were building it. Um, there was something effortless and natural to the sound. Uh, total system retail cost was about a million dollars, uh, so I would really expect nothing less. And uh, the last room I'll talk about is the Cord and Spender pairing. Uh, this amp is the Cord Ultima Integrated. Speakers are Spender Classic uh, one half or one over two, I don't know. Um, I describe this as sounding powerful, dynamic, transparent. Um, it seemed to get flustered at higher volumes, sounded better with the volume knob, kept at a reasonable setting. Uh, deep, deep sound stage as well, though. Um, and I really like the industrial design of the uh, chord components, pretty cool. So, there you go, a little sample of my experience at the uh, Toronto Audio Fest 2023. Uh, I really want to thank the organizers. Uh, they put on a great show. Um, wonderful sounding rooms uh, for the most part. Uh, really nice reception. Easy to find your way around. Uh, definitely go and check it out next year if you get the chance. Um, I think it's the same organizers that also put on the Montreal show. Uh, so thanks again to them for uh, supporting the, uh, the hobby and, and the industry. Um, it's great. Um, thanks for tuning in to Dave Listens to Hi-Fi. I'll be back again soon with another video. Uh, subscribe if you like what I do. Leave a comment. I will uh, reply to pretty much every comment I see. And uh, thanks for watching.